Before refrigeration, people used the environment to store and preserve food. They built cellars because it was cooler underground. In cold climates, they filled shacks with snow and ice, making what were essentially ice boxes. Then in the early 1900s, a French inventor developed the first machine to cool and preserve foods at home. The modern refrigerator comes in countless styles, sizes, and colors. Manufacturing begins with coiled sheets of steel. Just one of these coils produces hundreds of fridge exteriors. The interiors are made from rust-resistant aluminum lined with an acrylic shell. A shearing machine slices the steel into pieces for the exterior top, back, and sides. Then each one goes into a computerized punch press to receive holes for running various wires. A brake press forces the piece against a forming die, bending the steel at the edges and corners so it will fit snugly into position. To assemble the fridge's outer shell, workers place the pieces in an assembly jig which holds them firmly together. Now for the fridge's interior. A vacuum forming machine heats a sheet of plastic and shapes it against an aluminum mold. Then a router cars off all the excess plastic. The freezer half of the refrigerator slides perfectly into the metal outer shell and the fridge side follows. Copper tubes filled with heated gas are laid along the outer edge where the door contacts the fridge. The gas prevents moisture buildup. They add the pre-cut face frame of the fridge. Then they inject foam into the cavity between the interior and exterior shells. This foam not only insulates the refrigerator, but gives it structural rigidity as well. This evaporator plays a key role in keeping things cool. It draws the heat out of the refrigerator and the food inside. The electrical hub of the fridge and freezer is the control panel. It connects to a maze of wires and eventually to a microprocessor. With the freezer side almost complete, they install the evaporator for the fridge side. Next come the refrigerator doors. Two compressors pump fluid and gas through the various tubes inside. This component, called the radiator, dissipates the heat collected from the food. They attach the expansion valves. These allow the pressurized liquid coolant to expand into a cold gas that runs through the tubes in the fridge, absorbing its heat. They solder copper tubes to the compressor. They'll later fill these tubes with refrigerant. Temporary quick connect valves allow the system to be charged with inert gas to check for any leaks. They connect the temporary valves to fill hoses and add the inert gas to the sealed system. They use this wand to check the tubes for leaks. If there's a leak, the gauge goes out of the specified range. The process of refrigeration occurs as the cold gas in the evaporator coils pulls heat energy from inside the fridge. The compressor then changes the gas back to a liquid while the radiator dissipates the collected heat. That liquid then passes through the expansion valve, turns back into a cold gas, and circulates again through the evaporator coils. With a charging gun, they inject refrigerant gas into each tube, then weld the ends of the tubes shut. Now for the finishing touches, starting with the refrigerator handles. Drawers for fruits and vegetables slide right in. So do the rest of the pre-made shelves and compartments. Finally, they press an adhesive logo onto the top corner of the door. Built-in, standalone, double door or traditional, the refrigerator keeps our food just the way we like it.
never slow up. No, I don't take shit. I got no love.